The king has been dethroned. By the way, big apologies to everybody who has been waiting for this video. There have been so many leaf blowers and lawnmowers and weed whackers and everything going on rumbling outside because, yeah, apparently it's fall now. No, it's not fall yet, I think, but either way, it's been pretty busy outside, so I was like, okay, I can't record. The audio is going to feed into the microphone, and I don't want anybody going out there watching my videos to hear the bzz, bzz, bzz in the background, whatever. Let's talk about the big news that happened today. It is Mr. Colorado Avalanche himself. Is that fair to say, or is that still Joe Sackick? I don't really know. Here to stay, Nathan McKinnon. Look at this beautiful graphic. Oh my goodness, the graphic design team had a field day with this Nathan McKinnon is here to stay for eight more years graphic because Connor McDavid has just been dethroned. Nathan McKinnon, Mac Daddy going out there with, okay, not this tweet, not this tweet. This is the tweet I wanted to look at. Nathan McKinnon has an eight-year extension with the Avalanche, a $12.6 million AAV which makes him the highest paid player in the NHL. And if I'm correct, the highest paid player in the NHL's history when you go by average annual value. Sure, Sergei Fedorov had that $20 million year, but McKinnon, 12.6 million. If you do the math right here, 12.6 multiplied out by eight, it's a $100.8 million contract. Oh boy. The guy's set for life, $100 million over the next eight years. And if you see the contract structure, you could see that there is a $15 million signing bonus in the first year, $15 million signing bonus in the second year and the third year. The salary is only in the sub $1 million territory for the first three years. Then you have the $3 million signing bonus salary and the $9.15 million regular salary in 26-27. I honestly don't know what the benefits are to having things spread out the way they are. I'm not smart enough to comprehend that, so if anybody wants to go out there in the comments and illustrate okay, why is it that McKinnon is getting $15 million in signing bonuses in the first year, plus $775,000 in a regular salary? Would it not want to be a bit more diversified or whatever? Talk to me in the comments why everything is structured the way it is, because I'm not smart enough to go out there and comprehend it. But the biggest thing here is that Nathan McKinnon has this contract that will see him being the highest paid player in the NHL's history books, despite the fact that he has not put up a 100-point season just yet. He was going to get there in 2017-2018. He probably should have gotten there in the previous few years had he played the full season. But... Nathan McKinnon has maxed out at a career high of 99 points in 82 games played. Connor McDavid, on the other hand, is making $12.5 million a year, and, I mean, it's fair to understand why McDavid has been dethroned. I mean, McDavid's contract was given back in 2018, so it was a long time ago. The percentage of the cap for Connor McDavid's 12.5 AAV contract is 16.6% of the Oilers and their cap structure. Meanwhile, Nathan McKinnon, it's going to be a much higher, or excuse me, a much lower chunk. It's 15.27 because the cap has gone up since McDavid signed his contract back in the day. But either way, Nathan McKinnon is now making more money than Connor McDavid, and that is the very interesting part about it. McDavid is a guy that I could say is number one, if not number two, in the entire NHL in terms of overall talent. Multiple 100-point seasons, multiple hearts, multiple Lindsays. He is just an absolute game-changer, and he was two points a game in the playoffs. Like, how the heck are you going to go out there and compete with the idea that Connor McDavid is one of the best in the world? Nathan McKinnon, on the other hand, he's kind of in that territory where I know there are many people that will go out there and say, hey, I'd rather have Nate McDaddy than Connor McDavid. I'd rather have Nathan McKinnon on my team leading my championship caliber squad to a Stanley Cup rather than Connor McDavid. But at the end of the day, from an individual talent perspective, there is a debate that says that Connor McDavid is just better than Nathan McKinnon. You could talk about leadership, defensive play, work ethic, McKinnon might be better in all of those, but talent-wise, Connor McDavid is a 100-point scorer several seasons in a row. McKinnon hasn't hit it yet. Now, does that mean that there's no value in Nathan McKinnon's game, thus he shouldn't have been paid this contract? No, that's not what I'm going out there and saying. I think McKinnon is very valuable, and the fact that he's getting this contract, breaking the McDavid AAV for the first time in four years, it makes sense that it's McKinnon that's going to be the guy to go out there and do that. Now, I'm kind of just thinking about this. The Colorado Avalanche just won the Stanley Cup. 
And McKinnon is getting this contract because he helped them win the Stanley Cup. If they didn't win the Cup, I don't know if McKinnon's reaching that 12.6 AAV territory. But my question is, how do the Avalanche do in the future? Connor McDavid has never made the Stanley Cup Finals. Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, on their 10.5 AAV contracts, they have never made the Stanley Cup Finals. The only player to make the Stanley Cup Finals with a contract AAV at the moment that had eight digits was Carey Price, when the Montreal Canadiens made the Finals last year. Now, for Nathan McKinnon, if he wants to add his name to that list, he's going to have to make the finals again and maybe win another championship again and become the first player in NHL history making an AAV of eight something digits on the contract to win a Stanley Cup. It's never been done before. So, is Nathan McKinnon going to be the guy? You could say that, hey, I mean, the Colorado Avalanche, I mean, McKinnon was getting $6.3 million a season before on one of the best contracts we had ever seen in the entire NHL, and so with him doubling his salary pretty much from 6.3 to 12.6, I mean, this is going to be a pretty big hit to the Avalanche and their salary cap structure. Now, I get it. You could say, hey, it's fine. They already won a Stanley Cup, so it's not really the biggest deal in the world if you go out there and double Nathan McKinnon's salary because Nathan McKinnon was on such a good contract beforehand, but at the end of the day, there are legacies, I think. There are patterns in the NHL that can be challenged and upheld with a contract like this being given out to a player like this as well. I'm just kind of wondering now, okay, Nathan McKinnon has the highest AAV in the NHL's history. What's Matthews going to get? Matthews is going to get his extension that kicks in in 2024-2025. Is it only going to be two years where Nathan McKinnon is the king of the NHL in terms of salary before Matthews comes over and snatches that throne? Furthermore, Connor McDavid's contract, that ends in 2025-2026. Is he going to get $14, $15 million too? It's kind of funny, seeing how everything has rotated around with the three M's, McDavid, McKinnon, Matthews. It's Matthews' turn next, after Nathan McKinnon, who had just gotten his contract extension today. But for Connor McDavid, I mean, don't sleep on this guy. He signed his contract extension to make it 12.5 AAV back in 2017-18, and he had just been coming off of two 100-point seasons. Well, he's got three more under his belt now, and a two-point-per-game playoff campaign. So for Connor McDavid... Sayonara. I mean, I guess you're not the king anymore. It's Nate Mac Daddy McKinnon, who has now taken over the reins as the number one NHL paid guy. And I mean, the salary cap and everything, who cares? It's Nathan McKinnon. He's a good player and he's going to get paid good money. So 12.6 is the AAV. This is the contract structure. Once again, talk to the comments, your thoughts about Nathan McKinnon getting this extremely big contract. By the way, shout out to the Colorado Avalanche and their graphics team, because this is a beautiful, beautiful graphic. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.